Kia ora, Miss Kingy. Te mākua i mau. Who was your favourite student? Who was my favourite student? I can't believe you're thinking about that. Hinuehi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had many favourite many students and, and you, you are one of them. Yeah, that was the appropriate answer. Kia ora. How come I was never a prefect? Did you consider yourself as prefect material? That's a very diplomatic I, answer as well. I, no, I don't think right. you... I've moved on. Right, okay. I've moved on. <laughs> Do you support charter schools? <clears throat> and, there, yeah. and there was a deathly silence. <laughs> um, Dame Georgina Kingy. She's been the principal of St. Joseph's Māori Girls College since 1987. What do you call her? Well, it fluctuates <laughs> <laughs> between Miss Kingy and Miss Kingy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's yeah, really weird to call it. it. Yeah, it's it's just, I can't, I can't. After over four decades as principal, Miss Kingy is packing up, and over 500 people packed the gym to farewell her. One of 12 children, in 1956, Georgina joined her older sister at the Catholic boarding school, fresh from Whakatane and Anglican to boot. And I remember pulling up at the convent and they had a grill in those days. Uh, so the nuns would come out and slide the, the grill and I remember seeing she looked like an angel just the face of the nun who turned out to be Marina Palmer from from Matakana Island that was my first impression a bit scary uh, we were taken upstairs to the dormitories it was like a hospital ward it was so hygienic white counterpanes uh, steel beds Yes, it was a bit scary. Back then, the nuns were teaching, running the hostel and cooking. When we arrived, um, we sat down just in time for dinner. And so there was a toast, I can remember, a piece of bread on the table. And then I turned around to my sister, who was here the year before me. I said, oh, when do we have a kai? And she said, that is your kai. <laughs> And were the nuns in the full drag? Yes, yes. Like quite long veils and all long that? Long black veils, um, long black garbs, um, rosary, rosary beads. beads. Uh, they used to hold them, of course, when they went around at night when they were supervising so that they wouldn't um, make a sound. We had some Māori nuns here at the time, but um, they were, um, how would you say? Not as strict. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. They were young. They were young girls. So yeah. Just going just... into the nun, into the nunnery at the yeah. Anahira will leave Hatuhohepa this year. Tell me about your first day here. What was your impression? Uh, my first day here was very long. <laughs> because. Um, because. Oh, I can just remember as soon as it was almost time for property, we got told, yep, so we're doing legs together and stay sitting for the whole thing. Hatuhohepa was established by Sisters of Our Lady of the Mission in 1868. When I was here, the legend was these old corridors were haunted by the Green Nun. Did you ever hear that story when you came of here? Of course, of course we did. Did yes. you ever see the green nun floating around? Uh, we may have heard her, but, um, and that story still continues today, of course. Yes, it How keeps the girls in check. I mean, what's the worst that you got up to back in those days? Oh, I'd the fence, run down the shops, and if we had any money, and, and pinch all the apples off the trees as we went past. Sounds like, sounds like you're set up for a life of crime. <laughs> Miss Kingy's classmates described her as quiet, 
with her older sister Caroline cracking the whip. Did you ever sneak out when you were at school? The way that we were talking yesterday, I was a, I was a saint. Hmm. Did you hear what is that, a yes or no? Um, the way they were talking, it was as if I was a saint. Um, Look, this is what I have to deal with with politicians. Please, you did not answer the question. Did you sneak out? Of course one snuck out. Did one? Those days Where did one start. go to? There was one fish and chip shop down at Green Meadow. How racy of you. When I was at St Joe's, the formidable sister Margaret Purdy was in charge. She built strong relationships with Ngāti Kahununu and also other hāhi. The nuns were still running the show when Hiniwihi Mohi was there. Yeah. I was standing with my old besties from the 1978 intern mm. ship, and we started singing one of the hymns that we used to sing when we were here, and suddenly it was like the memories. One of our favourites was the irrepressible Jolly, Sister Maureen Richardson, nicknamed Doc. And she used to come through the dorm in the morning to wake us up. She would go, rise and shine and give God, God the glory, glory. God, that was, was annoying. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was so joyous, I was going to say. There's a number of Māori staff members I recall when I was here. Mm -hmm. and But it was run by the nuns, mm -hmm. the school. So how did you all get on with each other? Great. Yeah? They acknowledged the fact that we were Māori, very respectful, for example, of Mrs Unahi. Um, as you know, she was rātana, but in all matters, even spiritual and cultural, they'd go to, um, they'd seek her advice. In terms of, like, the prioritising, was there any tension there? At times, but the sisters we had at that time um, would um, acquiesce to whatever we we told them, actually, the, the relationship between the sisters and Ngāti Kahununu was excellent. They allowed us to be us. Mm. There was no interference. Yes. After she left school, the former head girl and ducks enrolled for a Bachelor of Arts at Auckland University, studying alongside Peter Sharples and tutored by the likes of Patu Hōhepa, Miri Miri Penfold and Ranginui Walker. Did you get a teaching degree? No, I didn't. Are you, a are you an unqualified teacher? No, there was a time there where we were able yes. to get the qualification before things changed. Yeah. So I actually didn't get a teaching degree, but I also know of, of other people who were great mm. teachers mm. who got that degree. As I said, most of my training came from Māori teachers during the, during the time of Kurodius and Moi Pepairangi and uh, Erina Coulter. And then you came back here to teach? Yes, I went home first because I had my son, I yeah. had Tani, and was called back, but I didn't intend to stay for this long. In 1987, Georgina Kingi was made principal of St Joseph's Māori Girls College. Were there any controversies around your appointment as a layperson and a, and a Māori woman? No, it wasn't no? so much that as, um, as the fact that... Um, I think the fact that... How do I say? Spit it out. <laughs> this what? Kind of, I was the Mary Magdalene of the... <laughs> it wasn't so much the fact that I was Māori. I think it was the fact that um, I had a partner at that stage and I wasn't married. And, and a son, obviously. And a son, obviously. Yeah. Although I don't think, yeah, that, that had any bearing on the controversy that, that sort of existed at that time. Who would... Get upset about that? It wasn't so much the sisters as members of the Hahi Katorika. So how was that resolved? The church. 
was resolved and that the sisters did step in eventually and say, so, okay, we're all good with this. <clears throat> yes. And I remember getting the call from um, Sister Provincial at that time to tell me you have been appointed as principal and it is unconditional. And that's how it went. So running a boarding school where you've got a whole bunch of girls all I'm not going to say locked up. Contained. You, 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 and Timothy Mohiokwe. Every time he sees me, he says Ketepe here, te fare here, here. So I remind him that all the locks are on the inside to get people like him out. Oh, what a lovely relationship. You oh have. no, we've got a great relationship. <laughs> Schools face many challenges today. So how does Georgina deal with cell phones? The rule was no cell phones. And there you go. Yes, we did um, sort of amend it slightly with um, Gabrielle and COVID. Yes. Because the girls did have to contact home. Yeah. Uh, but we've never ever. That's always been the rule here. Mm. At first, you know, I used to feel sorry for the girls. You certain other boarding schools. You know, they used to ridicule the girls because they didn't have cell phones, but I tell you what, it was one of the best things that we, we could have done. So you just Policy. you just developed your own tikka we, here? Yes. Yeah. What's the story around phones? So in the weekends, we get our own personal phones for half an hour or so, and we get to call home or just do whatever you want on them. But we have enough computers on school side that we can use when it's our dedicated time. Mm. Other than that, still in a book and paper. Yeah, but is that a problem, do you think, or what? Um, I don't think so because our our exams at the end of the year, we do them on paper anyway. Mm. But I think for, because of the new curriculum that um, they might want to start introducing more laptop time because of their exams are all online. Yeah, yeah. So we used to get ground if we were smoking. Mm -hmm. You smoked. Uh -huh. Did you ever think that you should be walking the talk back in those days? No, there was a set of rules for you and a set of rules for us. Oh, it's a bit elite, isn't it? <laughs> did you give up smoking? Yeah, I certainly did. Yeah. Vaping, is that an issue here? Yes, it is uh, an issue here. We're still working through that. Uh, the parents have them at home, so it's a difficult one. As with other schools, St Joe's has not been immune to tragedy. How does the Kura address issues around student mental health and well-being? We've got committed staff, everybody's on board. Uh, I'd like to think that we do know our students so that we can select staff to deal with students rather than having to go to outside agencies. Mm. Um, and we also get the parents on board as well. Georgina believes in personalised learning, the kind which puts the student and their achievement at the heart of education, where the system must fit the student, rather than the student fit the system. Which reminds me, charter schools. What are the pros? Uh, see, I'm, I'm still waiting on the pros. I, I, I actually rang the ministry to give me the pros on charter schools. Mm. And I guess one of the criticisms of it is it that it it takes funding out of the state system uh, yes. without strengthening those schools. Yes, as you know, I'm on the Māori advisory group, and one of my main concerns when we are, are looking at at improving uh, for things for Māori is that most of our students are in mainstream. Hmm. In Kura Auraki, we need to focus on them yep. more than what we're doing so now. What do you do here to make sure that the girls pass their exams? And Well, we develop good work ethic. It's high expectations from the parents, from staff and our whole St. Joseph's community. So they still have um, 
pretty staunch study period. Mm. Yes, before dinner it's an hour and then after dinner uh, is two and a half hours. I think particularly with the boarding students, yeah, you've got the opportunity to nail it. So what is the role in the state of um, Māori boarding schools now? Certainly times have changed uh, and our clientele has changed. Children come from challenging situations so that the focus now is, is off um, actual teaching and educating. Rather, it has become, um, I, I wouldn't even say pastoral care, that we, we call ma, uh, mahi taurima here anyhow. Uh, and that place is added stress. Yeah, added stress all around. So do you have any concerns about government policy now around education, or are you happy with uh, what they're doing? No, the changes, they're, they're too fast. Mm. Um, so your curriculum now, exams are being taught online. Does that yes. produce any challenges for you as a, as a yes, principal? Yes, I, 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 for staff, um, the time that they spend, even this morning, I mean, we had, uh, we've got benchmarking here, the setting up of technology, the digitalization, and I guess for, for a lot of teachers, I mean, it's, it's common knowledge out there. Perhaps the changes are going at too fast a mm. pace. Mm. How much more work do teachers have to do now in 2024 compared to 1974, for example, do you think? Oh, immeasurable. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Immeasurable. Boarding schools certainly aren't for everyone, but I got a lot out of Hato Hohepa, besides mates. Public speaking and debating, for example. When he was at Napier's Boys High, so you know, <laughs> God, we should move on, you know. <laughs> I mentioned one time when I was a claimant at the Waitangi Tribunal, the judge sitting on the bench reminded me that St. Joe's had whipped his school in the school debates. Why was that important at St. Joe's? Um, well, it's giving the girls confidence, isn't it? To go out into the world and do what they mm. need to do, like mm. what you've done now. But I guess, you know, things like Nga Manu Kōrero, standing up on stage, uh, making them stand up in class, giving speeches, mm. all that contributes mm. to that... that um... Confidence. Confidence, mm. yes. Mm. St. Joseph's is famous for its singing, gold albums, platinum even, one clock, two million plus sales, back when a young Macy Rika was fronting the school choir. Soprano Wiki Baker, Fiddy Mako Black, and of course Hinewehi Mohi cracked it big time. I really loved the, the kapahaka. I loved performing, I loved singing, I loved everything about the discipline of it as well. And I think it set me up really well for um, going into the recording studio later on. Um, Miss Kingy conveyed to us a, a sweetness and um, a, a real femininity, I yeah. think. I mean, you've seen me operate. Uh, all I got do is do like this, uh, go like this, and, and the girls hit the note that I want them to, to hit. And certainly when I go, there will be someone else doing the same. I mean, I can send these girls out without my presence, and they'll do exactly what mm. we, I think that they, they need to do. Yeah. So, I mean, mm. The word control was mentioned a few times <laughs> when I spoke with people. I said, what are you trying to say here? <laughs> no, no. Uh, um, guidance. Oh, guidance. It's... What do you think you got out of this, Kura? It was a stabilising kind of a force for me. You know, in your teens, you're sort of figuring out friendships and, 
and what you want to look like and how you want to be and, and just trying to figure out your place in the world. So it's a really critical time in your life. And um, I mean, who would want to be having the care of 200 Māori girls in their teens? When you think about Hato Hoepa, what stands out for you? Uh, being Māori uh, in today's world and how important it is and um, getting the best education that we can. And dream, mm. dream big. Mm. I've seen that with a lot of the kōtiros that I've um, seen over the last two generations. Amazing. This is the new, the new past pupils like Irina are on the hunt for thirty million dollars for hostel renovations. Under the previous government, oh, yeah. Te Puni Kōkiri funded significant upgrades. Yep. Um, okay, so wow, I can't believe how much space. I know, and they've got real beds, mm. beautiful linen, etc. They've got their own beds now. Oh, heat pump. Heat pump. They've got no pictures on the wall. Not she, yet. She, she must not let them put them up, you reckon? <laughs> this is really nice. But other parts are dire. And because the sisters, not the Catholic Church, are the proprietors of the hostel, the Catholic Church is under no obligation to provide financial help. It remains a burning issue for Georgina Kingi, who steps down from her role as principal this week. People keep saying to me, is she really leaving? I am really leaving. It, it won't take long mm. to clear my office out. How come uh, you stayed for so long? Uh, I, I guess one just, um, something always used to happen. Like, like I, I mean, I was supposed to go, what, good 15 years ago. Did you, did you try and bust out and then something would happen? No, no, things just... Happen. I'll just do this one more thing. I'll do yes, do, do this that. one thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, Māori achievement has always been a challenge, and I guess I I stayed to to help. And you do get fond of 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 you know even even my teaching stuff. There's something about the environment. Yes. There's something about the girls, um, even though at times you you wonder why the heck you, you remain here, but it, it only takes you a couple of days to get over whatever was troubling you in, anyhow. Mm. As I step into this new chapter, I encourage you to continue supporting one another, nurturing our traditions and striving for excellence. Nga mihingui ki akoto. Thank you, thank you, tēnā tato katoa. Why do you think you're ready now? Um, because people keep on telling me I'm 80 years of age now. What's that got strange. to do with yes, anything? Exactly. No one can even I, tell. I, yes, I think I need to go home now. Yeah. What do you I want to do? Mo, you know, I'd, I think I would like to hold study sort of sessions around home for mm. those those people. Perhaps go and ask Widamu Doherty if I could have a room at the Whareiwananga and anyone who wants to come there, I mean, it'll all be voluntary, and get them in there and have, have perhaps a study club, study mm. sessions after school for those That'd who want lovely. to come. Dame Georgina Kingi's vision has always been for girls to be confident, balanced, grounded, well-rounded women of integrity. My grandmother often used to say, you are everything to her. <laughs> Dame Georgina inspired in us as young Māori women wanting um, everything in the world and, and she allowed us to expect that we could achieve anything. What do you think of them when you look at them, these young girls and their uniforms with their single plait <laughs> and those stupid shoes that you make well I'm, no I don't I, you know I wish they'd get into Mary Jane's but uh, I don't even know what a Mary Jane is the greatest thing for me is I mean it happened yesterday when when they come running up to you and say hi miss I, I think 
that's the greatest thing. Mm. We all enjoy, not just myself. <laughs>